Let's work on the concept of the confidence interval of the slope coefficient. Now recall our regression line where we had the effect of attending lectures on the final grade. We have the coefficient given in our stata table over here and we're also given the 95% confidence interval. Now, I draw here on the graph how it looks like. The confidence interval ranges from 0.059 until 0.18. What does this tell us? So recall this, is that 0.12 is the beta hat. It is the slope coefficient in this specific sample. This is not necessarily equal to the effect uh, of the class attendance on final grade in the population. This is not the population slope coefficient. So this is just an estimate. Because this is an estimate, we would like to give a range of values that are going to include the population effect. So the 95% confidence interval is giving us the probability of 95% that in this range between 0.059 and 0.18, the true population effect is there. So the beta of the population is included in this range with a 95% probability. And with the same logic, with the same logic, with a 2.5% probability on this side and another 2.5% probability on the other side is that the population coefficient might be there, might be outside the confidence interval. And that's the whole point of this interval. This is statistics. We cannot be 100% certain, so we always give estimates. We always give probabilities. We would like to be as accurate as possible, but we'll never be able to be 100% accurate. So that's the intuition. One more way to look at it is the following, that the 95% confidence interval, the 95% confidence interval is giving us the fact that in 95% of random samples, so in 95% of random samples, the confidence intervals of random samples the confidence intervals will include the true population coefficient. So the confidence interval includes, includes the beta of the population. Graphically, it would look like that. For instance, if we draw a confidence interval of one sample, right? We take over here, this is the first sample, and this is our confidence interval, whatever that is. Let's just put some hypothetical lines, like from here until there. Then let's suppose that here we will have the beta of the population included the beta of the population will be included. We go to a new sample, a new, uh, new random data. We draw a confidence interval based on that sample by using the same logic. We have the beta of the sample, right? And we draw, we draw a confidence interval by subtracting a margin of error. This is one margin of error and the other margin of error. We do that, we do that again in the second sample. We do that in the third sample. So let me just draw it to make it a bit more, uh, you know, realistic. Let's say the beta of this sample is going to be slightly bigger, right? Because the data is slightly different. So it's going to be over here. And again, the confidence interval is going to range like that. And let's suppose that in this case, we also have the beta of the population. Now we do that many more times. Let's say we do a hundred times. We do that a hundred times in a hundred random samples. Well, out of a hundred random samples, 95 of them is going to include the beta of the population in their confidence interval. But in five of them, five out of 100, 5%, is not gonna have it. So we might have a confidence interval like that, right? But the beta of the population is gonna be over here. We're missing it. That's the whole idea. Anyway, hope this all makes sense and we're done.